Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I beheld a man sitting on an exalted throne whom a legion of angels worship, singing together, Behold, his rule and governance will endure for all the ages. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I beheld a man sitting on an exalted throne, whom an angel, a legion of angels worship, singing together, Behold, his rule and government will endure for all the ages. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Be God. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. The mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Yesterday was a long day for me. We had a polling station here, and they like to start early. The poll workers were here at 5.30 to set up the voting machines, and so I was here before 5.30 to let them in. And most of the day, I mean, they did their own thing, and it worked really well. They were really pleased that we had this place. There are people from our local neighborhood who said they had never been in this building. That alone should make us a little worried, but we'll work on that later. I kind of let them go about their business, but periodically I happened to be in the area when they were doing something. And early in the day, they all had to recite an oath. I've never worked at a polling station, so I didn't know this, that everybody who works there has to swear an oath as part of their job. And so I was in the kitchen, and they were doing this, and they got started. And like a good prayer, in my opinion, a good oath should be short. 
get in, say what you need to say, and get out. But this oath was a full page. They kept on reading and reading and reading, and eventually had to go out and say, do you guys have to memorize this or something? It, it, it was impossible to imagine that they would have had any memory of what it was they had just said. I was moved to wonder whether they had to read the whole thing for it to work, or if someone was miraculously st struck speechless after the first 200 words, would the rest count? But apparently they made through it, and no one raised a protest that they had not done their job, so I guess everything worked out. I have kind of the same reaction when I hear this thing this morning, both in the Acts reading and in the Gospel, this idea that there is baptism with water and baptism with the Holy Spirit. We as Episcopalians kind of try to split the difference, as we often do. When we baptize someone with water, we say you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. And that's how we get around that whole are you baptized with the Holy Spirit thing. Which is not to say that there are not some other Christians who look at it very differently, to include some Episcopalians, to include some former members of St. Thomas's, who are very proud of the fact that they feel they have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and can tell you the day and the minute when that happened to them. Now, I'll confess to you, I've always felt a little uncomfortable with that, in part because I've never had that experience. I never have felt like the Holy Spirit was suddenly poured out on me and I was prophesying and, and speaking in tongues and doing those things that are understood to be the gifts of the Spirit. On the other hand, I'm, I'm not sure I would want all of the things that some people claim to have. Uh, when I went to work at the big hospital in Charlotte, when I had just gotten out of my PhD program, I was walking through the emergency room one day and there were two emergency room doctors walking in front of me and the one, I came into this conversation in the middle, which is the only way you could do it. The one was saying to the other, and I told him, if he comes back one more time from the snake handling, I'm not going to fix him next time. <laughs> okay, I know, I know where I live now. So part of it probably is just that it hasn't been my experience. But part of it, I think, is also the way that it can become a way that we're divided one from another one who has the gift of the Spirit, and one who does not. And even more than that, I'm suspicious of anything where I is prominent in the sentence. I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I wonder how much of that becomes about me and not really about God. I think there's a clue to where we ought to be looking in the Acts lesson. Sometimes there are these weird throwaway lines that are in these lessons that we, we don't know why they're there. We read them anyway. At one point when Paul's talking about that he writes with his own handwriting, and that's great. So what? What does that tell us spiritually? This time, I think there's a point. The lesson ends by saying there were about 12 of them. Now, 12, of course, is always kind of a number that makes you stop and notice. But in this case, the whole point for me is that it's more than just one. They were baptized together, and together they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, whatever that may mean. I think the fulfillment of what happens to us in water baptism is what happens to us together as we go through the rest of our spiritual life. It's the rest of the oath that we might not get around to reciting on that first occasion, but that continues to be poured out on us through the rest of our lives and is poured out on us only when we are together. There is something about the Holy Spirit moving among us that seems to be much more powerful than what any of us experiences individually of it. So it gives me a little bit of comfort perhaps to imagine that I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit by all of the other Christians I have known through my life, all the times I have been with them, all the things we have done and experienced together. That, I think, is the fulfillment of God's promise of baptism for you and for me, that if we will be faithful with one another, hang in there as a Christian community, the Holy Spirit will do more through us and because of us, occasionally even despite us, than we can imagine or ask or pray for.
or even notice while it is happening. May it be the will of God we will at least see it in the rearview mirror as I think I have. We'll all get to the end of the oath and we will all see what it is that God has done for all of us, for all of humanity. Amen. Now let us, let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, for the salvation of humankind, that righteousness, mercy, and truth may prevail among all peoples and nations. For the well-being of your holy Catholic Church in every place, that you will confirm it in the truth of your holy word and grant that all Christians may live in unity, love, and mutual respect. Hear us, o Lord. For bishops and other ministers, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and those who serve you in this place, that both by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and faithfully administer your holy sacraments. For all who bear authority in this and every land, and especially for the leaders of this nation, that in a holy awareness of you they may govern the peoples in wisdom, justice, and peace. For all who spread the gospel among the nations and who minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, that they may have strength and courage to fulfill your holy will. For all who labor in commerce and industry, especially those whose work is dangerous or burdensome, for all who are engaged in the arts and sciences and those who teach and study in schools of good learning, for all who care for children and those unable to care for themselves, that they may be worthy of their calling to serve you and their neighbors. For those who farm the fields and tend the woods, for all who gather the harvest of the lands and of the waters, and for our faithful use of your creative bounty, that humankind being delivered from famine and disaster may acknowledge your glory in all your works. For all who serve our country at home and abroad, that they may have an awareness of your presence and the protection of your holy angels. We remember especially Adam, Annie, Ben, Bob, Bradley, Brett, Brian, Charlie, Christy, Duncan, Grace, James, Jeremy, Joe, Josh, Kagan, Kate, Kathy, Kevin, Luke, Marvin, Matthew, Nate, Nicholas, Stacy, Stuart, Tina, Tyler, and Victoria. Are there others? For all who in this brief and changeable life are in danger, trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, that they may have comfort and relief of all their needs. We remember especially Adele, the Archer family, Austin and Chrissy, Barry, Bernice, Betty, the Blackman family, Bob, Brendan, Brighton, the Carew family, Carol, Carolyn, Cecily, Charles, Charlie, Charlie and Ellen, Sean, Chris, Christine, Christine and Eric, Christine and Francis, Chuck and Paula, Claire, Connie, Court, D, Dana, Daphne, Darren, Denise, Dennis, Devon, Elaine, the Ely family, Elmer, Aaron and family, Flora, Frank, Fred and Lori, Freddie, Jeff, George, Gina, Giorgio and family, the Harrison family, Janice, Jean and Richard, Jim, John, Johnny, Judy, Julie, June, Karen, Catherine, Kay, Kelly, Krista, the Lane family, Larry, Liz, Lorraine, Mara, Mark, Mike, and Martha, 
Marge, Margie, Maria, Marianne and family, Marianne, Mary, Mary Ellen, Marianne and Bob, Matt, Michael, Morgan and family, the Mullins family, Nancy, Pam, Pat and Emmett, Paula, the Richardson family, Rick, Ricky, Sabi, Shannon, Sharon, Sandra, Sophie, the South family, Stephen, Stover, Sue, Susan and family, Terry, Thomas, Vicki, and Wallany. Are there others? For all your people, and especially those who worship in this place, that with faith, reverence, and obedience they may serve you with a glad mind and ready will all the days of their lives. Have mercy on us, most merciful Lord, and deliver us from all affliction, strife, and catastrophe. In your compassion, forgive us all our sins and failures, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so support us with your spirit that we may end our days in peace, trusting in your mercy at the day of judgment. We commend to your keeping all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear. Are there any to be remembered especially today? Remembering these and all the faithful departed and praying that you will grant them mercy, light, and peace. May we with all your saints have a part in your everlasting kingdom through the mercies and merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. To you be honor, glory, and dominion now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. By way of thanksgivings today, I should give particular thanks for this new set of vestments. This is our newest set of chasuble and stoles and hangings for the front of the church. And in my opinion, this is the most beautiful one we have at the moment. This is, this is a lovely thing. And I'm so grateful to those who were able to put it together for us uh, that we will have it to use to the glory of God in this place. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken to the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Thomas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.